If you ever played a game with a ranking system, you've likely aspired to reach the highest rank, and then quickly realized that you are not good enough. But some people apparently are good enough. Today we take a look at what goes on when playing in the highest ranks, from playing with professional gamers to accusations of win trading and being defeated by literal children. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by the Blitz app. Blitz is an app designed to help you perform better in your games. Just by using Blitz, you already have an informational advantage over your opponents. While the enemy team is trying to figure out how to do their runes before the timer runs out, you are already set as Blitz will automatically give you the most optimal current runes for your champion. Additionally, you got things like jungle timers and CS trackers, that make your games a bit easier. Their client is also helpful with giving you all the information you need all in one place. You can even see what champions have provided you the most LP and what champions you should probably stop playing. So if you're ready to improve the way you play, download the Blitz app with the first link in the description. Getting started, this is Challenger. This rank is home to the top 200 players. Odds are, you will never achieve this rank. As in, literally, the odds are against you. Only 0.1% of the entire player base gets into this rank. But if you do manage to get in, you get a very unique player experience. So with number 5, Challenger Rewards. Now, if you watch my videos, you've probably heard me talk about these before. Essentially, Riot actually used to reward you for reaching Challenger. On the screen are all of the rewards they gave out throughout the years. Personally, the Challenger Medallion in 2016 is my favorite reward that they actually sent out. I think it embodies a prestigious award more than uh, a backpack. In 2019, after rewarding a backpack for the second year in a row, they decided to stop giving these physical rewards permanently. However, they do give you something very unique today. For achieving the prestigious rank, your account gets a special recall animation enabled. While us peasants recall with this blue boring animation, challenger players get this unique recall that makes it look like they possess some godly powers. But alright, for number 4, we can get into something a little more interesting. Win trading accusations. In these higher ranks, almost all players will eventually start to recognize everyone by name. Since, unlike in a rank like Silver, where you have a pool of hundreds of thousands of players, in Challenger there's literally only 200 players and a couple more hundred from Grandmasters, the second highest rank. My point is that you have a much higher chance of getting into the same games as your friends or people you know. For example, let's say your friend needs only one more win to reach rank 1, and you end up in their game, on the enemy team. Here you now have the option to maybe not play at the best of your ability to give your friend a greater chance of winning. Well, this has been a thing that has allegedly happened forever. And just a couple months ago, the popular streamer Tyler1 accused two pro players of actually doing this. Then I got retilted playing with Core JJ, rank 3. Dude, this is a rank 3, rank 14, rank 1. Oh, he got rank 1 off that game, by the way. Oh, it's for sure a win trade. Oh, this had to be a win trade. I didn't even realize. Oh, this had to be a win trade. No shot. Core JJ randomly for the first time in a month, by the way, locks in Bard on this account, and he randomly goes Electrocute Inspiration. Randomly. For the first time in a month. Get the f*** out of here. Oh, Tactical's on the, uh, the other team. Oh, he's sitting right beside me. Let's just play some Bard real quick. Guardian? Not Guardian. F*** that. Let's go Electrocute. Oh, get the f*** out of here. Well, the truth is, he actually got rank 1 on his previous game. However, his previous game also had his friend on the enemy team. And if you want more fuel to the conspiracy theory, take a look at this tweet. It's a player celebrating reaching rank 1, but then Tactical replies with the single statement, Yoink, attaching a meme and now showing that he has taken back the rank 1 title. However, Tactical actually sent out this tweet exactly two minutes after finishing the match that would take him to rank 1. Meaning that he was already confident in winning this game 
and he had prepared to reply to this tweet immediately after the game would finish. Additionally, Tactical doesn't even follow the person he replied to, so he would have had to have this tweet somewhat prepared. Now, drama is always entertaining, but odds are all of this is more of a coincidence. But you tell me what you think. For number 3, getting defeated by children. In general, almost all of the top players you see, whether they're streamers or pro gamers, they're all adults, as they generally would have the most free time to invest into playing a game all day. However, recently there have been a few players pop up in Challenger that are actually very young. This player named Griffin just recently turned 15 and he has been in Challenger since he was 13. Allegedly, he says he's been playing League since he was 7 years old. Also, despite playing about 8 games per day, he actually says he's doing well in school. In fact, he says school has been really easy for him and that he's built differently. Among Griffin, there are a handful of other Challenger players who aren't even old enough to drive. But most importantly, as of making this video, General Sniper, a 14-year-old kid, is currently the rank 1 player on the North American server. What's really interesting about General Sniper though, is that he's the brother of an already somewhat established esports player. And he has a twin brother who just recently also reached Challenger. So I'm not sure what their parents are feeding them, but it seems to be working. Moral of the story, if these kids can make it to Challenger, I'm sure you can find a way out of silver. I believe in you. Now for number 2, ELO boosting. For those unaware, boosting is when you pay someone else to play the game on your account and take you to a higher rank. Now, allegedly, these high ranks have always been plagued with players who have been boosted. Some people pay an incredible amount of money to be in the highest ranks, just to say that they are that rank. And back before pro players were getting paid fortunes, some players would look for ways to make money on the side. And boosting was one of those ways. What have yeah. you seen when it comes to boosting and win trading? Everyone fucking did it. Dude, like, uh, the entire org LMQ, uh, every player on LMQ boosted. And only one got caught and he got sent back to China. <laughs> like, he got, he got banned and he got, like, sent back to China. And he, like... But everyone was boosting, like straight up. Like mm -hmm. I think at some point in your in like when you play, if you're really fing good, uh and you need money, you'll you're gonna boost. And by the way, he's referencing Zhao Wei Zhao. His whole team was boosting, but he was the only one who got caught. This is one of the most famous stories of boosting, as chat logs leaked of him requesting $1,400 to boost a player to Masters. He also only got caught because he played the same champions and builds that he was playing on his main account. Additionally, while boosting, he would play with someone who he had played with in the past on his main account. And for this little Little failed business venture, Zhao Wei Zhao was suspended from Pro League of Legends for 7 months. 6 months for elo boosting and apparently 1 month was added because he was caught trying to sell an account that Riot gave to him. But anyway, I used that as an example. And although it happened in 2015, boosting is still prevalent to this day. There are currently active sites saying that they can get you to Masters or Challenger for somewhere between one to five thousand dollars. And obviously these services still exist because some people actually use them. Alright, finishing the video with number one, something a little relatable. Sometimes even pro players struggle to get into high ranks on their personal accounts. One of the many requirements of being a Pro League of Legends player is to have been at least a Diamond 1 in the past year. Famously, there have been players who've been called out for getting stuck in Diamond, and in general, not every pro player is Challenger. However, back in the 2020 LPL season, a player was warned that he could have his professional status revoked due to the fact that their main account was stuck in Platinum. Now, the truth is practically every pro player is better than us playing from home. So odds are, he just fell behind on some unlucky games, and he hadn't put time into fixing the rank. Additionally, even someone like Faker goes through solo queue slumps. Although Faker is usually in Challenger, he just dropped down after losing 13 of his last 20 games. 
I'm currently editing this video and I want to step in and let you know to forget everything I said about Faker. I just checked his profile now and he's back in Challenger after winning 10 games in a row. Alright guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I think it'd be kind of cool if you subscribed, but no pressure. Anyway, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you again very soon. Hopefully.